Hey there folks and welcome back. In this video we're going to be evaluating this double integral. The integral from minus 1 to 1 of the integral from 0 to the square root of 1 minus x squared of x squared dy dx. Okay, now if you just encountered this integral out in the wild, your first attempt might just be to use Cartesian coordinates, right? We look at this inner integral with respect to y, an antiderivative for x squared would then be x squared y, and so we would get the integral from minus 1 to 1 of x squared y evaluated from 0 to the square root of 1 minus x squared dx. Now you sub in your bounds, and you realize that 0 is going to actually kill this whole expression, so we're simply left with the integral from minus 1 to 1 of x squared root 1 minus x squared dx. All right, now this integral that we have here looks a little bit gross, but it is solvable in Cartesian coordinates. You'd have to use a trig substitution though. You'd set x equal to sine theta, you'd differentiate to find dx, you'd replace the x's in this integral, and things would clean up pretty nicely. However, the integral still would require a little bit of work to solve fully. So rather than going down the road of trig substitutions, which can sometimes be pretty nasty, we're gonna try solving this a different way. To figure out how best to start one of these integral problems, begin by graphing your domain of integration. This will give you an idea of what techniques might be useful to you. So here, our y value is going to go between 0 and the square root of 1 minus x squared. Well, y equals 0, that's the x-axis, right? What about this other curve, y equals the square root of 1 minus x squared? Well, if we square both sides of this equation and move some terms around, we get x squared plus y squared equals 1, which hopefully you recognize as the equation of a circle centered at the origin with radius 1, right? This is our unit circle. Ah, but hold on a second. y is equal to the square root of 1 minus x squared, right? y has to be positive here. So this isn't the whole circle, it's just the top half. Okay, now what's x doing? We know that x is going between minus 1 and 1. Ah, well, x equals minus 1 is this point here, where our circle just touches the x-axis. x equals 1 is the other point where our circle touches the x-axis. So we're actually integrating over this entire semicircle in the upper half plane. Maybe now it's a bit more obvious that polar coordinates will be a good choice here. After all, this domain can be described very simply in terms of polar coordinates. The domain consists of all points where phi is between 0 and pi, right? We're going all the way from the positive x-axis to the negative x-axis. And our radius rho extends from 0 all the way out to 1. So this domain is really a polar rectangle. Let's see if we can convert to polar coordinates using what we learned in the overview video and evaluate this double integral differently. All right, to convert between Cartesian and polar coordinates, we're going to have to update several things in our integral. We have to update the bounds, we have to update the function, and we have to update our area factor, which in this case is dy dx. So let's start with the bounds. Our new bounds are actually given by these numbers here. The outer integral, which is written with respect to phi, goes from 0 to pi, and the inner integral, which is written with respect to rho, goes from 0 to 1. Okay, bounds are done. What about this function x squared? Ah, well remember, in polar coordinates, x is rho cos phi. So this function is going to become rho cos phi squared. Finally, we have to update our area factor, dy dx. Do we just replace this with d rho d phi? No! We saw in our overview that another rho sneaks in here, right? Due to some distortion in our little rectangles. So our new area factor is actually rho d rho d phi. If you clean up this expression on the inside, you should be left with the integral from 0 to pi times the integral from 0 to 1 of rho cubed cos squared phi d rho d phi. Now at this point, folks, let's take a moment to appreciate what we've just done. Our new integrals have constant bounds. We're integrating over a very nice region, a polar rectangle. That's very different from what we had before. Our bound here is a nasty function of x. So we really clean things up. Our function, rho cubed cos squared phi, is also pretty nice. It splits into a rho part and a phi part. 
So I can actually write this as the integral from zero to pi of cos squared phi d phi times the integral from zero to one of rho cubed d rho. Now I'm not actually sure how to find an antiderivative for cos squared phi off the top of my head. So I'm gonna apply a little trig identity. I'm gonna write this as the integral from zero to pi of one plus cos two phi all divided by two d phi. This is a handy little trig identity that you should keep in your back pocket. We then multiply by the integral from zero to one of rho cubed d rho. At this point, folks, we can find our antiderivatives. I'm gonna factor out this one half. The antiderivative of one is simply going to be phi, and the antiderivative of cos two phi will be sine two phi over two. We evaluate this whole thing from zero to pi. For my rho integral, the antiderivative will be rho to the four over four, and we evaluate from zero to one. Well, let's plug in our bounds and see what we get. We have one half, and then we plug in pi to get pi plus sine two pi over two. We plug in zero to get minus zero minus sine zero over two, and we move on to our next term. By plugging in one, we have one to the four over four, by plugging in zero, we have zero to the four over four, and now we just have to clean things up. You can see that in the first term, a lot of stuff is gonna disappear, right? Sine two pi is zero, sine zero is zero. We can throw out our additional zero terms, and we're just left with pi over eight. There you go, folks, our final answer and no trig substitution required.